Hi everyone and welcome to another video. I'm Lorraine and today I wanted to talk about Black Leopard Red Wolf by Marlon. I hate myself in the head. By Marlon James. <laughs> this is going to go very well. Uh, this book has come out already a couple of years ago, but the second book has recently also come out, which is Moonward Spider King. And because this book is very confusing, and to be honest, I didn't really understand any of it the first time I read it, I thought it would be good to reread it. Why this book is very confusing is something we will get to in this video. But first of all, what is the book about and what is the trilogy about? So this is set in a very dark fantasy world that is based on African myths. And the first book is told from the point of view of Tracker. The second book will be told from the point of view, it's going to be the same story, but from the point of view of another character that is also in this one called Sobalon. Why is that interesting, you would say? One story told from the point of view of another character. There are multiple reasons to that. First of all, one character will have seen, will have the different part of a puzzle than the other one. They have different paths throughout the story, so we will see stuff that this character will not have seen. But most of all, these characters are very unreliable. You have no idea if what they know is the truth, and then you don't know if what they're telling is the truth. So I'm imagining that reading the second book, Moonwitch Spider King, uh, the, the whole thing will be shift on his head. And because this is a very confusing book, and I still don't really know a lot of what is happening, I thought it would be a good idea to get a little bit more of an insight on some of the details, so that when I read it in the second book, I would be able to recognize it a little bit. In this book, we meet Tracker. That's his name. Tracker has a nose, as they say, and he uses that nose to find people. It's a nose that is so strong that when he smells something that someone has worn, he will know where they are at that moment, and I believe also where they've been beforehand, but I'm not entirely sure about that. Now, at the beginning of the book, Tracker has been caught, and he's being questioned by someone called the Inquisitor. That's all we know. We don't know why he's been caught, we don't know who this Inquisitor is, and what he is inquisiting because that's the word, apparently, I just um, invented. Now, Tracker tells the Inquisitor three stories. The first two are rather short, and they are just stories to tell us about Tracker. The first one is to tell us about how his nose works, so he'll tell a story about a man that he had to track, and you get a little bit of a glimpse of his nose, obviously, but also of the world that we're in, and how dark and mysterious and unknown for us Western readers it is. And the second story is more about how he was brought up. He was brought up in a small village uh, by his mother and a man that he thought was his father or grandfather. And you see a in that one a little bit where some of Tracker's traumas come from. He has an issue with every woman that he meets. Every woman will be a witch in his eyes and will, will try to do it harm. And you see that how that came to a little bit in that second story. Our third story is the main one in the book. Now, in that one, that's basically this chunk. Um, that third story is about Tracker being hired yet again to find someone. In this case, he's hired to find a young child, three-year-old uh, baby boy. Are boys still babies when they're three? I don't know. Uh, and he's hired to do that with a bigger group of person, people. Usually, he works on his own. But this time there's a group of nine people that is hired to find this baby and they're kind of told a story as to who's looking for the baby and why. But Tracker smells, feels that there's something shifty going on and throughout the book he also tries to find out, okay, but who's really looking for this child? Who's actually hiring us? Why are they telling us this story and not another story? Who else is looking for the child? Why are they looking for a child? Those are all the different types of questions that he's trying to find an answer to. The people that he goes on a quest with also have different reasons for going on the quest. He can trust no one. He knows that everything that he is told is probably a lie and that he is basically in it for himself. The only other person that he trusts, which is Black Leopard, also is acting in a weird way, so he also has that to deal with. And one of those nine characters, by the way, is Sobalon, the character who the second book will be taught from the point of view from, and she is one of the main characters that Tracker communicates with and has problems with. She is a witch, and therefore he does not trust her. She's also a character that at the beginning has a little bit more knowledge than him, and he is not being told anything. So there's a lot of confusing things because 
Person A will tell person B to, to say something to Tracker. Person B will then lie again, and we don't even know if person A was telling the truth. And then Tracker tries to find it out. And then on top of that, Tracker himself is very unreliable. So we don't know whether, well, we know that what he's telling the Inquisitor also is for a reason. He will say stuff or not say stuff or change stuff with a reason, and we have no idea what they are. On top of that, we've got this magical, dark world that Marlon James is putting on paper for us, where as a Western reader, you don't know the magical beings in this in these African mythologies. So you will see a magical being and not really know whether they're doing things because they are inherently bad. Like if you compare it to Western fantasy-ish, you would know, I mean, if you see a goblin, you will know that he will be snarky and in it for himself and be egoistical and probably with a big group and everything, stuff like that. You will kind of know the main traits of goblins, but with these creatures you have no idea. So there will be a creature at one point that does that does a bad thing and then they will shift and be on the tracker side of things. So there, you don't really know if they're a creature that are inherently bad or that they're a more complex being that will just have different reasons for doing stuff. So that, that doesn't help. Everything is super dark. There are trigger warnings in this book for pretty much everything. Uh, there's very icky stuff. There's a lot of sex. There's a lot of violence. There's a lot of manipulation also. So many elements that make this very complicated and dark book to read, but it was an awesome ride. This is one of those books where you will have no idea what is going on and where you're going and who the, what, 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 uh, anything basically, but you know the author knows and you know the author has every word, every character, everything is there for a reason. I know with 100% certainty there are many things in this book that I will not have picked up on that will be somehow ref ref referenced in the second book or maybe even in the third book, whose point of view we... I mean, I imagine the third book will be from a point of view of, of another character, but whose we will only know when that book will come out, which I'm very excited for and I haven't even read the second one. Um, you know Marlon James knows his shit, that he's done a ton of research, that he's a very, very good writer. So, And that's part of what reading this book does to you, is that you're just, you're just, you, you know you're able to trust, and you don't know where you're going, but you know you're gonna get there, and you know that everything that you don't know is on purpose. Everything that is murky, that is shady, is on purpose. Uh, so that's, that's awesome. That's great that there are authors out there willing to put this book, to publish a book that are confusing, that you know a lot of people will not gel with because they won't understand and that they're willing to just put it out there, let you live in this world. Uh, that's great. Well, the first time that I read this, because there's another added bonus for me personally, because I've, I've reread this, I could see how I also grew as a, as a reader. The first time I was struggling so much to get to the end of the page because it's a big book. It's got 600 pages? Yeah, nearly 600 pages. Uh, so I was struggling to get through the end of the page and know who the characters were because Marlon James, the another thing that Marlon James does to make things confusing is that he knew, uses a lot of similar names. So we will have a Sogolon, we will have a Sadogo, we will have a Sansambusang, and there's a fourth one. There are a lot of things that have similar names or that will be dark in a similar way, uh, which does not help. So the first time I was just trying to to get the characters apart and to just get through the end of the page, and I think that there were a lot of sections that I was just reading just to read, because he puts a lot of stories and stories and stories, so a character will say something that might not really be pertinent to the main storyline, and because I was trying to understand the main storyline, that story in a story was not necessarily something that helped at all. And now, because I knew what the main storyline was and the finding of this kid, and I kind of had a little bit more of a feeling for the characters, although it has been two, three years since I read it, I could appreciate the stories within the stories more. And I hope that when I get to Moonwitch Spider King, 
um, that having reread this and seeing a little bit more of the details, I will see more of how what Sologon is going to tell us is different from Tracker. And whether I'm going to find out who is lying of the two, I have no expectations. Probably not, but we will have to see. I don't know if I recommend this book. It's definitely, I mean, yes, I recommend it because it's an awesome voyage. You get pulled out of so many things that you're used to. There's gender queerness in this. There's these complicated species that you don't know. There is this world. There are so many things going on, so many layers that it is great to read, but it is also very complicated and very dark. So if that is not something that speaks to you, you might not want to do it. If you like to be ripped out of your bubble, then yes, this one will go through your comfort zone, the bubble after that, and the bubble after that. So for that, I would absolutely recommend it. Also, last thing, I think, look at this cover. This cover is also it's so representative of the book because it is art, it's complex, you don't know what this thing is. I mean, if you look longer and longer, you think, okay, that might be the Red Wolf, and this thing would then be the Black Panther, but where do they mix? Where do they match? What is going on? It's, it's basically the book on the cover because it is beautiful, but complex and dark. <laughs> My analysis of the cover, if you please. Um, so yeah, would recommend. If you've read it, please let me know what were your thoughts or what were your adventures going through it? Were the things that you still haven't understood? Uh, how do you feel about the whole eye situation with 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 what the hyenas do? Blah. Uh, if you're planning on reading Moonward Spider King and you might want to buddy read or at least talk about it, sometimes please also let me know because... I think that would help, <laughs> help me at least, and maybe other people as well. So yeah, Black Leopard, Red Wolf by Marlon James. And I will definitely talk to you when I uh, read Moonward Spider King, which I hope will be my next book, but basically I hope I will read in the next six months because otherwise I will have read this one for nothing because I won't remember it. See you in another video. Bye. Bye.